Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced, and you are listening to uh, Living Better, or Better Living, or whatever I call it. Let me actually, uh, I'll double check. It's been a while. Uh, Living Better, yes, because I've done different podcasts of different names, so it gets confusing. But bottom line, this is Living Better. You're listening. I'm Alex Merced, and today I want to talk about exercise, and just like, um, Talk about like exercise's role in weight loss and exercise's role in just better living. Okay, because a lot of people, I think, when they're learning about how to lose weight, because again, I just lost 50 pounds, you know, they hear that the majority of what it takes to lose weight has to do with your diet. And basically, what that communicates to them is like they don't need to exercise, that if they just eat the right things, they will lose weight. And this is true. Um, but there are several reasons you should exercise and there's several ways that you can use exercise to help improve your weight loss. Okay. It isn't just as simple as just like, you know, the more exercise you do, the more you get. There is an aspect of that because you are burning calories. Okay. And at the end of the day, like if you do burn more calories, uh, than you have taken in those calories. Gotta, that energy has to come from somewhere. Okay. But a couple things to think of. Okay. Once again, just because you're burning energy doesn't necessarily mean you're burning fat. Okay, so bottom line, like again, that's this is where the whole insulin story comes in. Generally, if your insulin levels are up, your body is looking for glucose. And if your body is looking for glucose, it ain't burning fat. Okay, so generally, like even if you if you were to eat a bunch of small meals, but still be like less calories, you know. Um, you'll still probably run into a situation where your insulin in your bloodstream is high because you're having such regular meals. So basically you keep having these like insulin spikes on every meal that even though you're exercising, you're not necessarily burning fat, you'll eventually get there. I mean, it's, you know, it's, you're, you can't burn nothing. Um, but it's, it creates a, there's going to be like this transition and, and basically your energy levels won't be like as stable as you'd like. So you generally want to, again, always think about like, there are periods of growth. That's where you want insulin. Uh, you want that glucose to be kind of absorbed throughout your body and whatnot. And then there's periods where you want fat to burn, which is why it's important to have like very clearly defined like eating periods. You don't necessarily have to go full on blown keto or intermittent fasting. You know, you could just do a 12, 12, eat for 12 hours and then don't eat for 12 hours. I wouldn't even call that a fast. That's just like not overdoing it. Okay, and then again, don't overeat during those 12 hours. Um, so that means, you know, you let's say you wake up at 7, then at 7 o'clock you stop eating until 7 o'clock again. And that's not hard to do. The problem is like most people, like, they wake up, they have breakfast, and then they're snacking on things until, like, midnight, until they go to bed. Um, that's going to cause all sorts of problems that just, just doing the whole 12-12 thing is just going to, it's going to have, make a, a bit of a difference in itself. Because during that 12-hour stretch, your insulin levels, insulin levels are going to go down, and your now body is going to start like burning fat and doing things. But also, when you're exercising, there are going to be types of exercises where you're more likely to burn fat uh, versus glucose. Okay, and that's going to depend on the intensity of the exercise. So you hear about like where it's like high intensity, low intensity, but there's actually like a tier. Okay, so basically, um, there is steady, like I would say, walking. Like if you are walking, you are burning fat. Walking worked wonderfully for me. Um, just walking every day. I walked a lot. I was walking. I still walk 12,000, at least 12,000 steps a day. Like I do 12,000 steps to start my day. And the way I think about it is a thousand steps is 10 minutes. So that's literally two hours of walking to start off my day. But I've definitely seen fat just disappear. Because again, basically I do do intermittent fasting. So I do stop. I was stopping eating around like five o'clock. Now I'm stopping eating around three o'clock every day. Um, and then I don't pick up eating till like around 11 o'clock. Um, depending on the day, like I'll switch it up a little bit and some days, you know, just relax. But, um, bottom line is that when you think about that, like my insulin levels have clearly dropped. My body has clearly probably used up any leftover, like glucose based energy. So really it's just working on, you know, burning my fat stores. Um, so basically when I'm walking, you know, you're just burning fat because again, fat takes a little bit more work to burn or it takes a little bit more time to burn. So if you're not, if you're work, if you're doing at a like slow, steady pace, 
your body's going to be more likely to use fat because it's not in a rush to burn energy. But if you start like, let's say, like going jogging, like just upping your heart rate a little bit to something a little bit more intense, uh, doing some more like sustained high intensity workout, uh, not like time interval. I'll come. I'll get to hit in a second. Um, What's going to happen is that your body's going to be like, well, we need the energy quicker. So it's going to rush to use your glucose stores in your muscles. So assuming, you know, there are, is any glucose still stored in your muscles. Okay. Um, so in that case, you're not necessarily burning fat uh, when you're doing those more intense exercises because your body's going to try to grab the energy from somewhere you can get it quicker. So you're burning calories and you're burning some through some energy you're burning somewhere, uh, but not necessarily fat. Again, if you don't have that alternative, then yes, you will, you will burn fat. Um, but again, assuming you're not doing keto, not doing intermittent fasting, there's going to be a decent likelihood that you do have some glucose stores. Okay. So in that case, um, you know, if you're looking to burn fat, walking is going to work really well. You could also do high intensity. Also, what happens when you're doing that mid-tier intensity, you're also raising your cortisol levels, which can be good in small amounts, but bad if you do it for a really long time, and especially if you're doing it like every day. Um, because cortisol it's the stress hormone and does things i'm not again i'm not i'm not a nutritionist i'm not a scientist i'm just a guy who watches other guys on youtube talk about health things and i'm just sort of organizing all my thoughts on what i've learned through my journey um but with high intensity what you do is you get that benefit because there is a benefit to the high intensity in other ways like in you know clear mind a lot of like there are like a lot of other benefits that are not specifically to do with weight loss, but also has an effect on sort of raising your sort of like baseline metabolism temporarily. So in that case, you can do like a hit, which means high intensity. High intensity means you don't do an intense workout for a long period of time. You're doing short bursts. So you might just go real intense for like 40 seconds, like just like push yourself to the max. Okay. So you're pushing yourself to a much higher heart rate. You're talking about like pretty high. I'm not going to give numbers, but you're going to push yourself pretty much as hard as you can so that way pretty much at the end of like and the idea is you push yourself that you can't go any further so that might but if you're pushing yourself to 100 percent, that's going to end up being like 30 40 seconds um and then you rest for like a few minutes and then you do that again a few more times and the idea is when you're ta you're, you're going to be one training your body to like adapt to to adjust to sort of higher intensity um but also um that's the, also teaching you how to like get the energy quicker and um again the, stimul the stimulation that it gives your body will lead to like longer periods of fat burning afterwards. Um, so that's one thing. So again, you know, ideally, if your goal is weight loss, then you probably would prefer like lower intensity walking mixed with the occasional high intensity interval training. Uh, again, not necessarily every day, because again, you don't want to do. But I would walk every day. Um, and walking isn't necessarily like something you should do like I do, where it's just like a big two-hour walk at the beginning of your day. Although I do other walks throughout the day, because at the end of the day, you want to have your body. As you, if you do eat carbs, and you know, at this point, I'm doing a lot less carb restriction, and I'm starting to introduce carbs more and more so back into my diet. Not a lot, um, but you know, doing a little bit of black rice or a little bit of like French pea lentils or something like that. Um, still like high protein uh the lentils at least um or you know lower glycemic index rice like like black rice or forbidden rice um that you know isn't quite i'm not going back like straight to like white bread and white rice and all that um and i'm not eating sugar but the idea is i am adding a, a bit more than let's say the 50 grams of cards it's generally recommended if you want to be in sort of ketosis um so in that case i don't want that glucose to turn into fat Okay, I want to make sure that, that that energy gets stored in my muscles. Okay, so that's one reason why you want to have more muscles, which is the reason why you, one reason you do want to do like resistance exercises to, dip, to, to build muscles, because that's going to raise your metabolic rate. So weightlifting is good because it'll make you burn more on average per day. But also whenever you do eat, like go, go for a walk. Okay, because your body's going to then, since you're in the act of burning energy or just using your body, your body's likeliness of storing that glucose in its muscles versus just leaving it around to be turned into fat is going to be greater. So movement, uh, so it's not just like walking, but walking throughout the day or movement throughout the day. Um, even if you just get up and like just move around for like a few minutes 
you know, after a snack or something like that. Although you want to avoid snacking. Really, ideal world defined meal periods. Again, I've been spy slacking on that one a little bit lately, but I do have a smaller eating window, so it's kind of hard to not just kind of be eating throughout it nowadays. Um, but yeah, so there is some thought when it comes to exercises. Again, it depends on what your goals are. Um, you know, again, you're not going to build muscle exactly the same time as you're burning fat. Um, but not necessarily, but it's not necessarily, they're not necessarily, you kind of can, but generally here's the thing, like generally if you want to put on muscle, you need to kind of eat more than maintenance because you need to have extra protein laying around. So that way it builds, not just rebuilds your muscles, but enhances your muscles and grows your muscles. But you need to be eating less than maintenance if you want to burn fat because you kind of need to make sure that there's no other types of energy available so that way it goes through your stores. Like you're not going to go through your, like again, your fat is your savings account. And you're not going to go through your savings account until your checking account is empty. Um, and basically your glucose stores are like your checking account. So long as there's money in your checking account, you're not talking... You're not touching uh, uh, whatnot, but you know if you don't have a lot of money in your savings and well if you don't have a lot of money in your checking account, you know you're not going to go invest in a new car, AK Muscle. Um, so it's kind of like this sort of like tug of war of sort of like what are you trying to do? Do you want to eliminate all fat from your body? No, fat does a lot of good things for your body, but you don't want to be to the point where you know you have fat gathering around your organs and you got a fatty liver like I ha do or have or had haven't had a check yet um, so hopefully this helps you think a little bit more critically about like exercise in its role so generally you do want to eat better and you want exercise again exercise is not just about weight loss it's also going to again uh, help your breathing and strengthen your immune system strengthen your respiratory system because again not everything is just the fat in your body there are all sorts of other systems in your body and you want them all working. Um, so what you eat is going to have a lot to do with it, but also the actual use of your body because if you don't use it, you'll lose it. So you want your memory to keep working, do things that work your memory. Um, you know, And then, of course, you want to reduce inflammation, and, but that's just going to just be an in general rule. You know, Not the topic of this particular episode. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this. My name is Alex Merced. You guys can follow me at Alex Merced on Twitter, but otherwise have a great day. Enjoy. I'll see y'all later.